time, long time ago. And she told me that Joe's class voted and they wanted to learn about farming. Is that right? That you wanted to learn about farming? Yeah. And she wanted to know if it would be okay for me to come to Omaha and talk to you about farming. So here I am. And right here, Joe, what is this? Uh, farm. Whose farm is this? Nana's. Nana and Papa's farm, isn't it? Can you can you show us some of the things that are on the farm? Do you want to stand up here and point? Can you show? Here, why don't you stand to the side so they can see? Can you show where are the grain bins? Uh, right there, right. And where is the closet? Right there. And where is the big shed that we park machinery in? Right there. And what do we do in this building? No, you don't need that. Um, well, this one we sleep, and this one we fix things, right? Okay, all right, so that's our farm. Now, I was trying to figure out a way to explain to you what our farm is like, so I used some pictures of, that I took with Joe at the farm, and so I made a book, and it's called Joe's Farm, and there's a picture of the farm. And so we're going to read you a story about Joe's farm. There's Joe right there. A farm is a piece of land where crops and animals are raised. Joe's papa and Nana have a farm in South Dakota. Their farm is about 650 acres, which is about as big as 600 football fields. Have you ever seen a football field? I can win your I have a football field. And it's big enough to have 11,000 houses. That's how big our farm is. Papa and Nana grow corn and soybeans and have cows and kitties and many buildings and machinery on their farm. My dog will come there. Yeah. We did have a dog, but our dog died. Little boys and girls who like to play in the dirt with diggers and tractors and trucks sometimes grow up to be farmers because it takes lots of good dirt to make a good farm. Can you show us the dirt, Joe? See, that's good dirt. Good black dirt grows lots of good plants. This is what corn looks like a few weeks after planting. By harvest time, it will be taller than the tallest basketball players. It will be more than eight feet high. My dad will be basketball. Did he? Well, th this corn will be even bigger. My dad will be basketball. Yeah, yeah. Like this is what soybeans look like about oh, ten yeah. days after planting. They will be almost as tall as I am when they are ready for the combine. So they'll be, they'll be up to here. Oh, I'll peek ahead. This is me in a cornfield before it's done growing. See how tall it got from, from here to here? Pretty tall, huh? This is Joe with his papa, who is not just a farmer, but a paraplegic farmer. Does anybody know what a paraplegic is? A paraplegic means that papa's legs don't work. And they haven't worked since he got very sick when he was 14 years old. So Papa uses a wheelchair and has hand control and special transfer devices to drive his farm machinery. Some of Joe's favorite things on the farm are, what do we have here, Joe? Truck. Yeah, army trucks. And here? Kubota. And here? Four the four-wheeler. And what does the four-wheeler have on the back? Do you know what that is? No. That's a sprayer. We'll, we'll talk about spraying in a little bit here. Okay. When Joe visits the farm, he likes to study about machinery. Who are you studying with there? Right here. Uh, Papa. Papa. And what are you doing here? Uh, You're supposed to be.
be taking a nap, but you're studying about machinery. <laughs> and who's this? Jack. Yeah, Joe's baby brother Jack likes to study about machinery too. But his big sister Emily's favorite thing to play with is the, ki the kitties, the farm kitties. <laughs> yeah, they're cute, aren't they? Oh, I think so. Sometimes farm machines break down, so farmers need to understand how engines work, and they must have lots of parts and tools for fixing them. So, yeah, what, what are we fixing here? A combine. A combine. What kind of combine is it? Uh, what? A John Deere one. A John Deere one. And here's, here's, here's Papa looking for parts in the drawers. And oh, here's Joe fixing something with a drill. And here's Corey and Mike and Kevin fixing a lawnmower. You have to have a big lawnmower on the farm because there's lots to mow. Oh, who's this? Nana. Nana works on the farm too. She knows how to drive all the tractors and other equipment and she cans the vegetables from the garden. See the cans right there? So here I am with, you You know what kind of tractor that one is? A Massey, Massey Ferguson. That's like a little chore tractor. And in here I'm in this thing. I'm in a skid loader. I use that almost every day because you can pick up things and put equipment onto trailers. That's pretty it's handy. Yeah, and right here, I'm driving that big tractor. I'm disking a field. Getting ready for spring. Oh, another job that Nana has is to rent the pasture. The pasture is grassy land where cows and calves like to be from spring until fall. Nana decides how much money to charge and meets with the cowboys in her kitchen. So here are the cowboys. And they'll bring their cows and calves to live at our farm from spring until fall. So we decided last year that we would charge $60 an acre for the cows and calves to live on our pasture. Where's your guys' house? Our house, it's all connected. I'll, I'll show you on the picture in just a minute. Because, because my husband, his papa, is in a wheelchair, all the buildings are connected so he doesn't have to go outside to get into the equipment. The cows and their baby calves come into the cattle yard every morning and every evening to get a drink from the, the stock tank. They, they like to drink the water. And what do we do sometimes when the cattle are there? What do we feed them sometimes? Apples. Yeah, sometimes we throw them apples from the apple tree, which is what your daddy is doing right there. One thing farmers don't like is weeds. If Papa sees a weed, he uses a hoe or spray to kill it. Papa says weeds squeeze out the good crops. There are bald eagles that have a nest in a tall cottonwood tree. The eagles like to catch fish in the Missouri River, which is right next to Papa and Nana's farm. And if you look really closely here, you can see that eagle has a fish in his talons. A fish's tail. Yeah. You see, you see the fish's tail there? They swoop down and catch fish right out of the river. And this is their nest. You sit back here so you You know how big their nest is? It's about 12 feet across. So it would be from that wall. It probably would be almost as wide as this rug. That's the nest. That's the nest. Okay. About 30 cats and kittens live on the farm. Nana and Papa feed them an enormous bag of cat food in a kitty pool. See that little kitty pool? About once a week. But all those farm cats still get hungry, so they eat all the mice they can find. After they get their tummies full, farm cats sleep a lot, about 16 hours a day. And so we'll find them sleeping. Like right now, they're sleeping in a plastic tub. They curl up inside um, five-gallon pails. Yep, you'll find them sleeping here, there, and everywhere. 
sit on your spot. Brody, sit down. It is not all work at Nana and Papa's farm. They have a park at the river where you can camp and swim and play and hunt and fish. Okay, Lulu, you leave it alone too. So here is one of my cousins fishing. And here's our picnic shelter. This is the gate where we go down to the river. This is the monument at the park and the American flag. And this is the park. And you can see people are playing and camping and having fun. You can play golf. Sometimes we hit golf balls. Your dad hits golf balls all the way from the house into the field sometimes, doesn't he? Once some bad guys stole a car from Papa and Nana's farm. A nice policeman named Officer Bob caught the bad guys and found the car and brought the car keys back. Then Officer Bob took a picture with Joe and Emily and baby Jack. Yeah, he was a little bit nervous about that. <laughs> Do you remember that night when the policeman came? Sit down. There is a graveyard on the highest hill at Papa and Nana's farm. Joe's great-grandpa, Robert, died, and he was buried there. Soldiers and family and friends came to salute great-grandpa Robert. Joe, if you can see, I don't know if you can see him right here. In the, can you point where you are, Joe? Yeah. Okay. Joe, br Joe brought his own shovel and helped shovel dirt into his great-grandpa Robert's grave. Great-grandpa Robert was an army colonel who served in three wars. He was very brave and he loved his country and he loved Joe. Is, is, is that the police? Yeah. That's the policeman there. Sit down. Sit down. Not the soldier. That's the, the soldier. Yeah, the, the, the soldiers brought great-grandpa up in the no. army truck. Hmm? No! So that's the sunset. That's okay, we're almost done. This is the view from Joe's great-grandpa Robert's graveyard at Papa and Nana's farm. Isn't it beautiful? God is so good. I saw, I saw the sun is yeah. coming down. After, after we buried great-grandpa, I don't know if you remember this, but there were two jets that crossed in the sky like this and made a great cross in the in the sunset. And it was so pretty. It was it was up here, but I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> That's the hole, yeah. We used a skid loader to dig the hole for the grave. And then we shoveled and shoveled and it took a long time but we couldn't fill it up so we used the skid loader to finish it, didn't we? Mike did it. Mike did it, yeah. I think actually I think David went back and did it. Is there any, does anyone have any questions about farming? I know. Okay, what would you like to know about farming? I have a tractor. Okay, tractors. Uh, this one here is a John Deere, uh, that's an 8760. That's, that's the biggest one. And we talked about this, the skid motor. And that one there is a 4440. That's just a good chore tractor. And then this one, this one I think really is this is a 630. This is an older tractor. They used tractors used to be littler in the olden days. Now they're getting bigger and bigger. I I don't need a drive. That to go too big. <laughs> it's, I, well, it's that one's a model of it or a toy of it. I have a it's a actually, how big is that tractor? <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, someone asked about where where the house is compared to everything else, and I think you can kind of see it on here. This is the house, and you see it's connected to the shed. So all this is house, and then there's a this is a hundred foot shed. So we can go from the house to the tractor, and we have an electric lift. So Rick can get into the tractor if he needs to push snow or something without going outside. Do you know why farmers have grain bins? Do you know what we put in there? Yeah, corn is in the big one. And soybeans go in the littler one. Why do farmers put their grain into bins, do you think? Because. Because? Because they have to dry. Well, it keeps it nice, you're right, it keeps it nice and dry. Uh, when, you, when you harvest in the fall, the price is not very good. So most farmers like to store their grain for a few months until the price gets higher. So they make more money. And so that's what those grain bins are for. What other things should we tell them about the farm? Oh, that, yeah, that is an auger. That's how you get the, the grain into the bin. See that long thing? That's an auger that it, the, the grain goes into the top of the bin. You, there's a hole that you can open up, and it'll take it from the wagon or the combine right straight into the bin. And then you close it, and it keeps it dry until you're ready to sell. You know what else we can do on our farm? We can find arrowheads and artifacts because long time ago Native Americans lived where we live. One time I remember my dad, great grandpa Robert, he came on the four-wheeler and he said, get on, you have to go see something. And so we went down by the creek and there in the grass, it was in the spring, just this time of year, there was a skull, a human skull. And we picked it up and looked at it, and it was full of dirt. It was very old, so we sent it to a museum, and they figured out that it was 900 years old. It was a woodland Indian maiden who was 16 years old. Was it was it big? It was just a, just a normal size. Yeah. Um, so that was that was interesting. But I found lots of arrowheads. We also find morel mushrooms on our farm. And sometimes we find animal bones. And what else, what do we hear sometimes at night? What do we hear howling? Coyotes. There are a lot of coyotes. Does that make you nervous? No. I don't know what they are when I'm sleeping. You don't know where they are when you're sleeping? Yeah, that's right. They stay outside, don't they? It's, yeah, it's a little bit scary. One time we had an old dog and some coyotes tried to get the old dog to go away. But we were able to call her back. That was scary. Another, another thing we have are deer. We have a lot of deer. And one time I, I saw there were five coyotes trying to lure a little baby deer away from the other deer. But they didn't get it done. They didn't get the job done. The baby deer was safe. I'm not scared of the coyotes. You're not scared of the coyotes? I think they're more afraid of us than they are. I put them in here. I'm not scared of the coyotes. You're going to put a coyote in jail? Okay. All right, so did you get on our corner and soybeans now? I don't. Okay. I'm not scared of the coyotes. All right, do you want to do it inside or outside? What do you think? See what grows first. Oh, and these are, I'm going to leave these. These are magazines that Joe likes to read uh, all about equipment. You want to do it first? Okay, there's enough for everything. This one is called a skid loader or a bobcat.
Okay.